Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are about to put a rocket in a... a well, we are going to put a rocket, but we're also going to put a satellite, specifically this satellite, in a polar orbit around Kerbin. So that should be exciting. I don't usually do manual polar orbits. It's pretty much the same principle, but you need a little bit more delta V because you, you're not using the rotation of Kerbin to aid you there. So there is that. But this rocket is so hilariously overbuilt that it should be just fine. So let's go ahead and launch this. So we're going to be going to the north, unless I'm horribly mistaken on what direction we need to be going in this thing. Which, let's see here. We need to be going... Interesting. Very, very interesting. Well, it looks like we do indeed need to be going south to north. So we're going to be wanting to... Well, where are we right now? We are currently here. So as far as we're concerned, yeah, this is the correct direction. We want to go north. Okay, SAS on. MacJeb, Smart ASS. Delta V stats. Maneuver planner. Okay. We don't have ascent guidance yet. We're not going to be doing that. So um, let's see which which direction is actually north here. Um, this way is east, which means that north would be up on my arrow keys. Gotcha. Okay, let's give this a go. Never actually done a manual polar orbit. Always relied on Mechjeb to do that one. So this should be exciting. And off we go. Principles for it should be exactly the same, except that we'll be going this direction towards the horizon, rather than this direction. So we're going to do the same about 150 meter turn for our gravity turn. Let's see here, 25, 30, 40, and starting about now. So we're just going to pitch downward slightly. There we go. Keep the pitch kind of slow. We'll let the smart ASS, or rather the SAS, rather than the smart ASS, but the... We'll let the SAS just kind of guide us down a little bit here. We're moving pretty quick. Maybe move slightly over this way. We want our heading to be either 360 or 0. I believe they're the same thing. <laughs> they should be anyway. Okay, we'll be ditching this stage quite soon. Now. And off we go. Excellent. Okay, we are at an apoapsis height of 56 kilometers. Our inclination could be a little weird here. We may have to burn a fair amount of delta V on that, but that should be fine. We have so, so much. Okay, let's go ahead and go to horizontal velocity up. Correct our heading a little bit here. There we go. We are currently going down in time to apoapsis, so we're going to keep on this burn for as long as necessary. Come on, correct that heading. No, still, okay. Come on, correct that heading. Well, that's closer. Come on, correct that heading. Eh, close enough. Okay, so we are currently going up in our apoapsis, so we'll go ahead and coast once we hit 100 kilometers apoapsis height. Which will be right about... actually we should deploy our fairing since we're in space. 100 kilometer apoapsis height right about... Mm, not quite now. Close enough. Okay. We, we will do our standard 
Hang on. What are you doing? No, seriously. What? Oh, we're having trouble controlling our pitch. That's the problem. Okay, we'll just do this. And we'll freeze it with a bit of a gamey trick. Time warp freezes location. Location. Time warp freezes rotation. Okay, there we go. And we'll start our burn now. Okay, we don't need it now. So we will warp ahead to about 45 seconds. Eh, about 30. Okay, we'll burn now. Until we're back up to about 30. And we'll try again at 20 seconds. Right about now. Okay, we don't need it. We'll try again at 15. Okay, we do need it at 15 briefly. Excellent. Let's try again at 10. Okay, again at 5. Right now. A little late on that. Looks like we're good. Okay. We'll do another small burn at zero. Just to try to make our eccentricity go down a little bit. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, now. Okay. Close enough. So our, uh, our inclination is a little awkward here, as expected, but we're pretty close to a polar orbit. So uh, let's go ahead and we can't really set a target here. But what we can do is go directly up here, right about here, and we'll add a maneuver to burn I mean, that's not working. <laughs> Do we need to go a different burn? Radial? That shouldn't work. And yeah, that doesn't work. Okay, I guess we need to... Yeah, we need to do this. Right at about... Let's do that. Just so that I can see a little bit better. That's pretty close. Yeah. I mean, that, that is pretty close. So, right around... Not quite there. But a little closer to there-ish. And we'll need to raise our app our apoapsis down to around here anyway. So we may as well. Something like that-ish. I mean, it's not perfect still. Let's continue trying to tweak it a little bit. I mean, I, I think it's more just that we don't really have a good ascending and descending node target here because we can't really target this orbit. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and line up like that. Do it right here. Burn like this. And call it a day. As far as matching inclination goes. Real quick question here. Uh, time to apoapsis is longer. Yep, we are going the correct direction. Excellent. Okay, so this inclination will take a fair amount of delta V to get to. So we'll go ahead and execute that. I'm glad that I have spare delta V here. Kind of thought I might be. Okay, so off we go. It'll take a little bit of time to turn. But we will get there momentarily-ish. I mean, it'll take a 
fair amount of time. We've got 95 Delta V left in this tank, and then we'll be able to turn quickly. That's the core issue right now with this satellite booster design. But it's not a huge issue. I mean, the, the other core issue was that we just launched at the wrong time. We If we had launched at the correct the correct opening, the correct launch window, we wouldn't have had to burn 1154.8 meters per second to, to get to the correct inclination here. But it's fine. No concerns. Okay. Come on. There we go. We should be there. It should be firing the time warp. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. And here's the pole. It's a glorious frozen wasteland indeed. Okay, and now we're into our primary maneuvering stage, or our second stage, I guess. This is more of our second stage. This is more of our maneuvering stage. We have so much Delta V, though. I'm not even concerned about burning all this. This should be no problem whatsoever. And there goes our orbit twisting on in. Well, not really twisting, but more rotating. I mean, because we were in a circularized orbit, or very close to circularized, there shouldn't really be any particular better time as long as we're picking one along here. So, this should be close enough. Again, we could have mech jabbed it, but I always like to do these things at least once, just to prove that I can before I mech jab with abandon and to my heart's content. Mech jab does make things a lot easier, but it's it's not the worst. Okay. Looks like I eyeballed that really well. Descending note of zero degrees. Not bad for eyeballing. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we now need to get our periapsis and apoapsis up to the correct altitudes. And I kind of want to do that by burning basically here. Burning this prograde and getting this guy up to about to here. I mean, there's no real point, though. Right? Well, we have to get the the correct eccentricity. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and burn this here. Get it on out here. That's too much. Out to 2.982. So, we can get this up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Scroll wheel's going crazy. Stop it, scroll wheel. Right about 2.982 is what it was. That is really close. Now, of course, the apoapsis isn't in the correct location. But I don't think that actually matters. We'll find out. Execute that node. We've got plenty of delta V to correct it if it does. But I think we just need to get the correct apoapsis and periapsis and it'll just fall into place. Because we have the correct inclination as well, so we should be fine. There we go. We're going to be warping in just a moment. Here we go, warping. Hello, South Pole. Well, very soon, anyway. <laughs> we passed the North Pole a little bit ago, but we'll be hitting up on that South Pole pretty soon. That's the Kerbin version of Antarctica. 
Okay, so we will be having this maneuver node completed very shortly. And then once we get out here, we just want to up our periapsis to be 2.415 million. Which shouldn't be too, too bad. Add maneuver, prograde, periapsis up to 2.415. She'll be right about here. I mean, our orbit is not 100% correct. We'll see if it counts, though. 2.415. And change of 937? Okay, we'll target 937. 1, 5. Nope. Scroll wheel keeps going ham. Stop it, scroll wheel. Just about there. This is the closest we can get. Okay. We'll see if this counts. If it doesn't, we'll have to do... We'll have to do a radial burn to try to twist this into shape. This may or may not count. I don't know. We have the correct inclination, periapsis and apoapsis. We're just not quite at the right angle of them. So, we'll see. If it counts, great. If not, we've got so much delta V. We are going to be getting into our maneuvering stage finally, though. So, I'm glad we didn't strip anything off in terms of, in terms of delta V. I knew this polar orbit could potentially be a fair amount, so... Okay, so we're going to be burning, looks like, three meters per second out of our maneuvering stage. And let's do this burn. Excellent. So far, so good. Where is the planet? Oh, there's the planet. That's a ways away. <laughs> well, we knew that would happen, too. And we burned that off. Oh, that was the fairing stage. Now we just need to burn this. There. Okay, we'll see if this counts. I don't think it does. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't. Okay. We'll go ahead and add a maneuver up here, and we'll just see about twisting this orbit a little bit. See if we can't get this closer, like so. Yeah, that'll be fine. Maybe a slight amount of retrograde. Uh, I think that's in too much. Slightly less retrograde. Kind of like, yeah, kind of like that. A bit more up, which means a bit more in, and that should be close enough. Okay, 60 meters per second. We'll execute that. Just a small radial and tweaks to the periapsis there. That should get us definitely in position. So, just a very, very minor corrective burn of 60 meters per second. Okay, let's do it. Right about now. Yep, that was close enough. And now we're just showing off. <laughs> there. Basically perfect orbit. And we got our contract complete. Excellent. Okay, so let's head on back to the Space Center. Now, we didn't get a lot of science, but that's okay. We kind of actually already have what we need 
in terms of science. So the next thing that, that is on our list is probably actually to land on the moon. I think that's the next goal. I mean, we could position a few more satellites, but we've got the money. We're not going to be spending 128,000 bucks on on a moon lander, I, I hope anyway. That's not really the idea. So let's go ahead and do a new ship here. We're going to be using the Mark I lander can. Now this only is a one-seater, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and use this, and then we're going to put in a experiment storage unit, not a crew cabin. <laughs> oh, we're going to put in a, an experiment storage unit right there, and then we're going to put in some survival pieces here. So we're going to put in a pair of drogue chutes mounted right here. And a main chute right here. Excellent. Okay, we are also going to go ahead and put a couple of solar panels on this thing. I feel like we're going to mount them here. And then maybe two more on each side like this. We have plans for some of these other locations. Okay, let's, let's get into those, shall we? Let's... Put on a four coupled radial decoupler right here like so excellent okay and now we're gonna do t200 fuel tanks four of them like that excellent on top of this we're going to be placing our standard payloads which would include a service bay and a... where are we? Here we are. Here we are. And a Science Junior. And then the nose cone and such would go on top. Inside of the service bay will be pretty standard stuff. We're not going to be putting any communications in there, I don't think. Well, maybe we'll put a communicatron, just in case. You never know. This is space travel. Okay, we are going to put in... As far as experiments go, redundant thermometers, two of them, not four. No, 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 what are you, no, two, there we go. It's because I was mousing over the four coupled, uh, the, the four coupled fuel tanks. Okay, two of those, we're going to put in two barometers. We're going to put in two mystery goos, no, not four. We're going to be putting in two. There you go. Yeah, we're actually going to mount them up top. They fit in a little bit better. There we go. This direction is good. We're going to be putting in a KER flight system. Just a single one of these. There we go. Going this way. And let's see here. We have a barometer. We have all of that stuff. We should probably put in a pair of batteries, just to be on the safe side. We'll do this. No. We'll do this. There we go. <laughs> okay, Batman, go on in. Excellent. Okay, I don't really think we need anything else in there, really. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this. Excellent. Now we're going to go ahead and put some modular girder, girder segments down here just so we have a little bit more landing pad room. And then we're going to go ahead and put... Hmm. We need landing legs. We're going to put LT1s at kind of an awkward angle here, sticking out like this. So see, they're, they're significantly further below than when, where they would be if we mounted them up there. They're going to start retracted, like that. We're also going to need, on top of these, some decouplers, like that. And we're going to need some aerodynamic nose cones. 
because this thing is going to be going through the atmosphere unprotected. So we need to be aerodynamic. Now immediately below this, we're going to be needing a heat shield because we need to re-enter with this apparatus. We don't need these to re-enter, but we're going to be needing to re-enter this way. So we're going to have a heat shield here, and then we'll need a decoupler to be able to decouple whatever is below the heat shield, which in this case is actually going to simply be a terrier, like so. However, we need to get fuel to this terrier. So we're going to have to run some fuel ducts from these tanks down to this engine, like that. Excellent. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and toss on another decoupler. And that's our lander. We'll do a quick maneuver stage here. T-800 probably, just to make sure we've got the, the fuel to get where we're going. We'll put a terrier on there. And then a decoupler here. And now we're going to kind of design a new first stage, and we're going to call this the Snedgus Mark V Lander. There we go. We're going to save that. We don't need our symmetry to be in the mirror. And let's go ahead and go into the structural and grab a Rockamax brand adapter. There we go. And then we're just going to toss on, like... Two big orange tank equivalents, like that. And then down at the bottom, we're going to have ourselves a mainsail. Now this thing has some lift to it. This is going to lift a lot. Like, a way lot. The reaction wheel in this thing is not going to be able to turn this, like, at all. So we may want to add in some RCS down on this stage, just a little bit. Uh, where's a monopropellant tank? Hang on. Mono. Looks like we only have some... We, we only have some radial, radially attach, uh, attachable monopropellant tanks. Well, that's okay. We'll stick those on here. In fact, we're going to be triple symmetry, uh, quadruple. There we go. And then we're going to do a few RCS thruster blocks. Now, this should flow, theoretically. And then that RCS will be able to help us turn this thing, if necessary. Okay. So this is very close to finished. We're just going to go ahead and slap on a pair of side boosters, just because I like side boosters. This is going to be nice and simple, uh, just like three T-800s, like so. And then we're going to be using, ideally, a swivel, but I don't know if these will actually lift themselves. That's the question. I think they will. At any rate, this thing will be eating fuel like nobody's business. We're going to need some aerodynamic nose cones, for sure. We'll go ahead and grab those. We'll need some struts to attach in our side boosters. Like so. That'll be good enough. And then we're also going to want to run a fuel duct from the outside in, like that, so that the mainsail will be eating out of these first. We're going to check our staging real fast. But this thing should land. How many parts do we have here? Only 88? Yeah. These side boosters are fine. That's good. These two stages can be combined. These two stages can be combined, and then you fire off that, you detach this, let's detach these, these aerodynamic nose cones. Um, well, 
certainly by the time we detach this tank, they should be detached. So certainly by the time this goes on, these aerodynamic nose cones should be down here to be detached. And then all of these decouplers here should be detached at exactly the same time as their engine. And then these, we would want the two drogue chutes to deploy first on the way home. So there you have it, the Snedgus Mark V lander. So this is our heavy lifter that would take us all the way to the moon. It's probably overbuilt. It's going to burn through these side boosters in 40 seconds. <laughs> but that's okay. That is just fine. That's 40 seconds that it's not burning out of these tanks. Anyway, next episode, we're going to be heading off to the moon, and we're going to be using this thing. See you all then.